Welcome to the Church 360 Ledger Reconciliation and Reports webinar. Today I'm going to be your instructor. My name is Jordan Bogart. I'm a software support technician with Concordia Technology Solutions. So you can uh, see my information there on screen. I've had uh, the uh, pleasure of being able to serve our churches here at Concordia Technology Solutions actually eight years as of today. So. I've uh, been here a little bit uh, for a little while here now. So if you'd like to reach out to me, like I said, you can see my contact information there. Uh, also a note here, all phones and microphones have been muted. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask those questions in the questions window and I will be happy to uh, answer those questions. Or uh, also joining us today is my manager, Rod Kyles. Uh, he is, uh, all, he's also been here at Concordia Technology Solutions here for a while, uh, so you can see his contact information there if you'd like to reach out to him. So, all right, well, yeah, let's go ahead and discuss what we're going to be uh, talking about today. So, today, uh, you know, kind of a breakdown of the structure of the class. We're doing our overview right now. We're going to get into our discussion about reports and the bank reconciliation process. Uh, there will be a quiz here. Uh, no stress on the quiz, though. You are not being graded. It's more just seeing, hey, did what I say stick with you? Uh, and then, of course, there will also be a Q&A session. And uh, this is just time at the end of the session. If you didn't get to your questions, go ahead and feel free to ask them then. But again, I want to stress that, you know, you can ask your questions at any time. I do want to also let uh, all our attendees know that the session is being recorded and it'll be made available uh, shortly after the conclusion of this training. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. Okay, so what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to start off by talking about reports. We're going to talk about a handful of reports. So we're going to start off with the general ledger report. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, then we're going to hop into, we're also going to talk about the balance sheet, our chart of accounts. And balance sheet. It looks like I had that. I uh, missed that there. Sorry. That second one should say uh, income, statement of income and expense. I think uh, flub on my part. I do apologize for that. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the bank account reconciliation report. We're going to be covering a few other smaller reports in here as well. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the event log and then we'll get into our quiz. So let me go ahead and continue on here and also the Q&A of course about that. And so that's gonna be the structure of our class today. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my camera here, just so we can focus on what's on screen here. And so this is, uh, this is our demo site for Church 360 Ledger. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and kind of use this today to view our reports as we have kind of a lot of different transactions that'll help populate our reports. Um, now, just a general rule about reports uh, before we really get started, and uh, you know, first general rule I have about reports is that the report, you, any reports that you run are going to be just for the book that you are running them for. So, uh, you know, for example, uh, I have multiple books here. You can see I have, you know, quite a few different books. Uh, but any reports I run are going to be exclusively for the Christ Community Church book. It's going to include just the Christ Community Church's chart of accounts. So uh, just kind of a heads up on that. You're, you're only running reports for the book that you have selected. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's take a look at our first report here today. And that's going to be the general ledger report. Okay, and actually I forgot to. I'm sorry, I forgot to hide this. I am... Just a mess today here. Let me get that hidden. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's get back to it. So the general ledger report. Now the general ledger report here is a log of every line item of every transaction that you have here in the system over the time period that you select. Okay, so speaking of the time period you select, you can do that up here. And when you click in this box, it's gonna show you a date, uh, kind of a date picker here, and there's a lot of options to it. So you can pick a specific year that you're working with. So you can see right now I have 2022 selected. This will show you all the fiscal years that you, all the fiscal year that, that you have uh, run through. So if you're running a non-calendar fiscal year, you might see like 2021-2022 instead of just like 2021-2022. Uh, but, if you go through here and let's say you want to look at you know 2021 i can click on this and this is going to give me the entirety of 2021. Um, i can also go in here and say well i want quarter one of 2021 for example 
I could select that and it just gives me the first quarter of 2021. So January 1st through May 30, uh, excuse me, not May, through March uh, 30, yeah, through the end of March. So you have that there. Or you can even go through and pick, pick specific months. So maybe I just want April of 2021 and here's everything for April of 2021. Or, of course, if you'd rather, you can just put in a custom date range, too. So let's say I wanted to look from, uh, let's say, April 1st, 2022. I can, just, I can just type that in. I don't know if I do that right. So let's go back here. So 0401 2022. And I'm going to run that through, let's say, the end of May, 05. 31, 2022. Okay, so I'm just looking at two months here at that point. So I can kind of set whatever date range that I would like to look at here. Okay, now as for what the general ledger is going to show us, it's going to show us all of our transactions in line item order. Um, and you see, you it's going to, sorry, not line item order, but a, a date order. So you're going to see everything from latest to earliest here on your list. Okay. Now you're gonna see, so you'll see all those transactions there. Uh, then you'll see the type of transaction that you're looking at. So you can see like the checks, deposits, and you can even filter this here too. So if you were wanting, you know, maybe just like a check register uh, over this time period, you can go ahead and uncheck this all option. So you're not filtering by any option, and then say I just want checks, and then this would just show you your checks on your general ledger. So this kind of lets you filter your general ledger then. Okay. Next up, we have the check number column. Now, obviously this will only be relevant on your checks. So you'll only see, uh, yeah, if you filled in check numbers for these checks, you'll see that check number right there. Next, we have the payee. And the payee is the person or organization or company that you paid with this transaction. So that may not be relevant for every single one of your transactions. You probably won't have a payee for your deposits, for example. But if you, again, just like we could with the, uh, the transaction type, I can filter this by payee. So let's say I just want to see all my transactions for Ameren Electric during that time. Well, if I go ahead and select that, I can see just my transactions for Ameren Electric see that all there. Okay. I also have the ability to group this ledger by payee. So if I click this button here, you see it says group by payee. When I click this, this is going to group out my general ledger. So it's still going to put everything in date order within the groups. But you can see here's all my transactions that didn't have a payee assigned. Here's all my transactions that involved Ameren Electric. Here's all my transactions that involve Arling Dowling. So you can kind of see it'll go through here and it will group your, uh, trans your uh, transactions by payee. Uh, you can also see, you can also look at your different accounts that were used. Now remember, your general ledger is showing transactions by line item. So uh, you can see, when you look at this here, not every line represents, you know, you know, not e one line does not represent an entire transaction. Like for example, this check here, uh, this check is composed of these two lines. The line where the uh, expense account was cre uh, was credited, sorry, debited rather, and the line where the asset account was credited. So you can see those two lines there. But you can, you know, so this is all per you know, per line item here. And again, just like you could with the payees, you can filter by account by line item here. So if I wanted to see only you know things that had that went in here for my income account for my building fund, I could see that here. And you'll see all those transactions there. Okay. Uh, then you can also group by account as well. So just like you could with the payee, if I click on this, this will let me go ahead and group all my transactions by line item, by uh, sorry, by account. So I'm seeing all the line items for these various accounts kind of grouped together. And if I click that button again, that will ungroup this. Then you have a memo line. This is going to show you the memo, the memo that was filled in on that particular transaction. So you'll see that there. And then finally, you'll see the amount. And this is the amount that this uh, a particular line item was affected. So uh, anytime you see a line item in red in parentheses, that means there was a negative effect on this account. So this account was reduced. Uh, if you see a black line, uh, numbers, uh, numbers in black, that means that this account was increased. So 
very quick way to be able to tell that. Now you might have noticed here, as I've been kind of going through, you might have noticed some lines here that are kind of a pinkish or reddish background to it. These are voided transactions. And we keep our voided transactions on our general ledger as a sort of the auditing tool. We wanna make sure that even if a transaction gets voided, that we can account for it here in our system. And that makes sense as a security feature. Otherwise, somebody could just come into your system, write a check, print it off, take that check to the bank, and then void the check in your system. So that way, you would even you would never know that they wrote a check. But because the voided transactions will still be in your general ledger, you'll be able to see that that check was written. So it's a security check for you guys to be able to see something. Now, once you've uh, kind of set the general ledger up like you want, you have a couple ways we can get this out of the system. We can go ahead and click print here to get a printed version of our general ledger. It's gonna bring up your uh, web browser's dialog box for printing. You'll see the date range on here, general ledger, and you'll see each of your, uh, you'll see each page of your general ledger here. And you can kind of see that's where it would be. And then of course you can, do any options you might want, select which printer you want, and then go ahead and print this out. Okay. Now, that's one way we can do this. We can also export this out to Excel. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click Export to Excel. And this is gonna take our general ledger and put it into an Excel spreadsheet for us. So I can click on this here, to open up Excel. And here is our general ledger inside of Excel. And I clicked Enable Editing so I can make changes to this if I'd like. Now, a couple changes uh, in the general, uh, when we export the general ledger out to Excel is you notice it doesn't have the color, of the different colors in the text. So again, if something has a negative effect on an account, instead of seeing it in red, you will just see the parentheses around that transaction. So something to be aware of there. You might also notice an additional column here that says voided. The voided column, what it's here for is because again, we're not showing the colors on these uh, different lines. This tells us if a transaction was voided or not. The extra benefit to this is it will even tell you what day this transaction was voided on. So that might vary from the day the transaction was actually written for. So you might have a little bit of a variance there and you can see kind of the difference between when something was written and when something was voided. So for example, I voided some transactions here a little bit earlier today and so you can see hey, these transactions were voided on today's date. Okay. Now, if you wanna run a general ledger without voided transactions being included, that is possible. Um, you'll wanna go ahead and take this uh, general ledger report out to Excel, and we'll wanna get rid of these first four rows. And I can do that here in Excel by moving my mouse over the row numbers, and you'll see my cursor turns to a black arrow here. If I go ahead and just click and drag down through it, it'll highlight these first four rows. And then I can right click and then click delete. And that will go ahead and remove those first four rows. Now I'm just left with the data of the general ledger. Now next what I can do is I can go ahead and if I click in the uh, little corner spot between A and one, that's gonna highlight my entire table. Now from here, what I can do is I can go to the top of Excel click on data, and from data, I can go to sort, okay? This is gonna let me sort my table. Now, I wanna make sure this box is checked to say my data has head, has headers. This will make sure this first row is not, uh, they, don't, they don't mess with this first row, it'll stay in place. But the column that I want to sort by is my voided column. So I'll go ahead and choose voided here and I'll click OK, and this is gonna put all my voided transactions to the top of my general ledger. Everything else will still be in the proper uh, date order. But what I can do here is then I can go through and I can click on the column number two and just drag this down through the bottom of my voided transactions. Then I can right click and I can click delete, and then that will get rid of any voided transactions. And then I'm left with a general ledger that is just including my non-voided transactions. So this is a good way we can kind of go through and we can uh, get a, not a, a general ledger that does not include voided transactions if you were looking for something like that. So that's our general ledger report. Let's go ahead and close out of this. And let's move on to our next report on, this li on our list today. And that's gonna be the income and expense report. Now the income and expense report, when we come to this, 
uh, we'll want to go ahead and select our date range here. Now, the date range does, uh, well, the options we have in the date range do change a little bit with this report. And that's because we're using budgets in this report. And we'll talk a little bit more about budgets here a little bit later during, uh, a little bit later on during today's training. We did discuss those in the first training uh, session as well. Uh, but with this, because it used budgets and budgets use only whole months, they don't go down to a specific day, we can only select a specific month and year that we want to work with. We can't go down to a specific day. So again, I can go through here and say, well, I want all of 2022, or I want the first quarter of the year, or I want a particular month. I can kind of go through and pick what I'm after here. So uh, let's go ahead and use 2021. Let's use a 2018's number. I'll just pick, our, pick a year here. So we're going to use 2018's numbers here, for example. So this is our statement of income and expense. Now, what is it trying to show us here? Well, first of all, you're going to see the accounts uh, that we're working with here. Now, granted, though, not every row we're seeing is an account. These rows that are underlined and have the triangle next to them are actually categories. And categories are the summary of all the accounts un, uh, under them. So it kind of summarizes all of those accounts. Now, this black triangle here, what that's going to let you do is if I click on it, I can go ahead and collapse this category. So I'm just seeing the total of the category instead of each individual account under it. So like, for example, the ministry category here totals up to $6,465. And that's composed of the music ministry account, the men's ministry account, the young adults ministry account, and the women's ministry account. But if I click this triangle here, that just goes ahead and hides all the individual accounts, and it just shows us that we have $6,465 in this account budgeted out. Okay, And I forgot to mention, so I'll go back and mention this. The only, accounts, uh, the only type of accounts that you're going to be seeing in the income and expense report is just that, the income and expense report. This report is used to uh, look at how we budgeted out our uh, various income and expense accounts and compare that to what we've actually brought in or actually spent then. Okay, so we can look at that there. So that's the account line. You said you'll see categories and you'll see accounts here. The next thing you'll see is the budget line. This is going to represent the amount of money that we have budgeted out or we've kind of predicted that we will earn or spend over the time period that we have selected. So you can see this reads 2018 budget. So this is the entire budget for the year of 2018 for these various accounts and categories. So I can see here we projected that we would bring in $300,000 to our income account. Now if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that's where the expense category here starts, and you can see the budgets for your expense. So income budgets are a projection of what you plan to bring in for these accounts. Expense budgets are what you plan to spend for these various accounts. So you can see that all here. Okay, so you have the budget column, then you have the actual column. Now the actual column, as the name implies, is what you actually brought in or actually spent. That's kind of the way I like to think about it. So this is going to show you what you actually brought in or actually spent. So you can see, you know, in a comparison between our uh, general fund budget and our general fund actuals, we underperformed by a, quite a bit here in 2018. You can see we planned on $300,000, but we really only brought in near $75,000. Now granted, this is a trial account, so you'll probably come a little bit closer here, but that would be a pretty bad year for the church if that was the case. Um, but we'll go through here and we'll see, you know, your, your actuals on the accounts and you'll see those uh, all broken out by account there. And then finally, you'll see also a percentage of the budget that you brought in. So in the, brought in or spent. So this is saying that we brought in 24.96% of the $300,000 budget with our actual. So, and then you'll have the amount remaining and the rema amount remaining is, is the difference between your budget and your actual. Seeing numbers here in the black for income is typically a bad thing. That's saying we brought in less than we were expecting to uh, for these accounts. Now, seeing numbers in the red, however, for your uh, income is a good thing. That's saying we overperformed. We brought in more money than we were expecting to for our, uh, in, for our budget. Then. Now, the reverse is true with expense. Seeing numbers in the black is a good thing here expense because that's saying we spent less money than we intended to than we uh, had budgeted out but seeing numbers in the red is bad because then we've spent more money than we expected to 
Now at the very bottom of our income and expense report, we have an income less expense line. The income less expense line takes your total income budget and subtracts it from your total expense budget. It does the same thing with the actuals as well. So this is kind of going through and saying, hey, if we're looking at what we, what we in total projected to bring in and subtract it from what we in total expect to spend, this is where we're going to come out. So we're showing an 81,000, almost $82,000 surplus on our budget here. Now, the actual ended up being even better than that. We actually ended up with $145,125.36 surplus in the uh, income and expense there. And it gives you a percentage here, just like it does uh, with our individual accounts and categories, and then the uh, difference between our actual and budget. And again, seeing a number in the red here, because we're looking at the net income is a good thing. All right. Now, just like you could with the general ledger report, you of course can go ahead and print this out. Um, it also will have an effect here if you, so if I've collapsed the ministry account, when I export this out to Excel, that should also be a collapse there. So if I export this out to Excel, this is gonna take our income and expense report out. And you can see here now, uh, if I enable my editing, that's gonna actually show me my figures. You can see that ministry category is collapsed when I exported it out to Excel. So that does carry over, uh, you know, expanding and collapsing these. So a lot of churches don't like to show their restricted income on their budget. So what you might do is you might collapse that, and then you can just remove this line from your uh, income and expense report. Uh, but I wanna point out here on this report, that you'll see that there are bolded lines and unbolded lines. The bolded lines are your categories. And with the bolded lines, if you click on these and you look up in the formula bar, these are actually formulas. These are not like just bare numbers that we put in here. So the bolded lines are all composed of formulas, which means if you make a change to one of the uh, account lines, that's a, the uh, lines on the accounts that's a part of this, like let's say we pump up the education budget here to $1,000 and then I press enter, you can see that will have an effect on the various categories that that budget, that uh, that education account feeds into. So you, you can kind of experiment with your budget and your actuals here a little bit and see like, well, if we made this change, how would it affect the rest of our numbers? And you can see that there. Now, no changes that you make in this spreadsheet are gonna automatically carry back into Church 360 Ledger. So just keep that in mind. Now, one thing we get a lot of questions about is, okay, this is looking at all of 2018. Um, so a lot of the times people wanna see their whole year budget and actuals compared to their, uh, you know, maybe like a year to date figure. So let's say we wanted to go ahead and then we'll go ahead and look at quarter one of 2018. I'm also gonna go ahead and export that out to Excel. Okay, so I've, Hold that up over here. Now, this is the budget and actuals for my quarter one of 2018. I'll go ahead and remove these top lines here, just like I kind of did with the general ledger. So just removing those. And then what I could do here is I have my whole year here. I could go ahead and take these lines from my whole year. Um, report, and I'll go ahead and click on the column header for my budgets, so column B. I'll right click on this copy it and then from here what I could do is if I want my budget my annual budgets to appear to the right of my quarter one 2018 budget I could go ahead and right I click here on the column C right click insert copied cells and now you can see I have my quarter one budget compared to my annual budget and here's then the actuals for quarter one of 2018 I could do the same thing here and I could put my actuals in for the entire year as well so let's take my 2018 actuals and we'll do kind of the same thing. And I'll put that in here. And then this would give you a report that would show you, you know, quarter one compared to annual, quarter one compared to the annual for your uh, 2018. And you can see that all together on one report. So very easy to kind of put that together in Excel. All right, so that's the income and expense report. Let's move on next, talk about our chart of accounts report. Now our chart of accounts report, um, the idea with this report is it's going to kind of show us changes over time. 
Um, now again, uh, we'll want to select the date on this transit on this report. So uh, we're back to being able to select down to a specific day again. So this one doesn't involve budget, so you can use uh, month, day, and year for exactly what you want. So let's go back to 2022 here. And we can look at all of 2022. And again, you can select a specific quarter, month, or set your own date range down here. And what this chart of accounts report is telling us here is it's going to show us each and every account in our system, including the restricted funds. It's going to show us the, rest uh, the restricted and unrestricted funds on our asset accounts. So we're seeing the balances of every single account from top to bottom here in our system. Okay. And again, just like you have with the uh, statement of income and expense, you can expand and collapse different categories. So if you're just wanting to see the total of a category, you can just collapse that category to just see totals instead of seeing the individual accounts under that. Now, what this report is showing us here is it's comparing our starting balance on the accounts, and that's the starting balance as of the start of your, your date range, and comparing that to the ending balance or the balance at the end of your date range. So saying, hey, basically, the, here's the accounts from point A to point B. This is also going to show you the total debits and total credits that have been applied to each of these accounts. Because we see the debits and credits like this, we can even use this as a trial balance report. A uh, trial balance report is basically used to make sure our debits and credits are in balance. So you could use, like I said, you could utilize this as a trial balance report if you wanted to, and you'll be able to do that kind of out in Excel. Uh, next, you'll see the total change in the account. So this is kind of how the account has changed over that time period. Again, just like the income and expense reports, numbers in the black represent an increase in the account, numbers in the red represent a decrease in the account, and then of course you'll get a percentage change as well. You can go ahead and print this report out just like you could with the previous reports. So you'll see those there and you can see that budget report there. You'll all, and then you'll also, of course, have the option of taking this out to Excel. You'll see right here, and there's the Excel report. And then there you go. And again, the numbers here that are bolded are categories, and those are composed of formulas, meaning if you make adjustments to the accounts that these categories, uh, uh, the accounts that these categories are looking at, you can uh, affect these figures. So again, it does not flow back into Church 360 Ledger automatically, but again, it's a good way to kind of look at things if you're trying to see, hey, if we did, if we made this change, what would happen? And that's the chart of accounts report. Now, the next report we're going to look at, the balance sheet, is very similar to the chart of accounts report. Uh, there are a few key differences, though. Now, the, the balance sheet itself, it has the same columns. We're still looking at the uh, accounts. We're still looking at starting balances, ending balances, debits, credits, change, and the percentage change. But the difference is the balance sheet is going to do two, two things that make it different. Now, number one, you'll notice here with our checking account, I had restricted funds under that, but instead of showing me the unrestricted account and all the restricted funds under it, this is just showing me the overall total of the checking account. Okay, so that's the first change. Another change is that on this report, we're only looking at our assets and our liabilities. We're not considering our income and expense here. So this is just a true measure of what you own as a church versus what you owe as a church. And because of that, the very last line of this report is assets less liabilities. This is a good this is a good way to get get a picture of kind of the overall financial health of your church because this is saying like okay if we take everything we own and subtract from everything we owe this is going to give us a good picture of kind of what what uh, assets you know kind of what we actually have on hand to be able to run the church because if we owe you know we get we kind of owe a lot we might have money that's kind of uh, tied up and dedicated to you know certain things. You know, seeing a negative figure here doesn't necessarily mean the end of the world, but it means maybe you have some liabilities that need to get paid off. So something to consider there. Now, again, just like our other reports, I can print this out. There's a print option here, and that's going to go ahead and print your report out. And you can also go ahead and export this out to Excel. And this is what it whoops, there. This is what it'll look like in Excel. Pretty simple. 
Okay, so that's some of the uh, kind of pre-built reports here in the system, but there's some other reports I'm going to just briefly show off before we get into talking about our bank account reconciliation. Uh, first one I want to look at here is the budget screen. Now, I know uh, my associate Taylor kind of showed off the budget during the first training, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but I do want to mention that this is a, this is a uh, we can use this as kind of a budget report. So once you've gone through and prepared your budget, what you could always do, and you can select which year you're looking at here, which refresh the page, it'll come up here for me. I can choose which year I'm looking at by clicking on this date selector up here, and I can go through and I can pick, you know, uh, specific years that I'm working with. Uh, but I could go through here and I could click export out to Excel. And this is going to then act as a budget report for you that you could maybe present to your church council and say, hey, here's our proposed budget for the year. Uh, what do you guys think? And you could, of course, then print this out. You go up to file and then print, print this out of Excel and you can hand that off to them. And then they could kind of in turn say, well, hey, we want to make these changes to the budget. Well, then what you could always do then is if you want to apply those changes, like let's say here um, we want to change around our music ministry just a little bit. We're going to put maybe $100 more in in June and maybe 200 in February. I could go through here and make my changes. And then what I could do is I could highlight the entire table here, copy it, and then come up here and, and paste this in. And I could paste my budget figures in to bring my to bring my budget kind of import my budget here into Church 360 Ledger. So this would be a nice way to be able to kind of go in, make you know, give your kind of your church council access to your budgets here, make your changes, and then kind of bring those back in very easily here in the system. Okay, so that's the budget report. Now another report that we offer. Um, is with our payees. Now with our payees here, if I click on the gear and then payees, we're going to see a listing of all the different payees we have here in the system. And the payees are, uh, you know, the people or companies that you pay. And if you ever want to see a summary of kind of what you paid a very uh, different pay, you can go ahead and click, uh, move your mouse over them, click history. And this is going to take you into a summary for this payee. And you can choose what date range you're running the summary for. So that date selector we've become very familiar with. And then you can print this out, and this is going to show you the total debits and credits that have gone against this employee here uh, to pay, you know, to pay, to pay them. Or, of course, you could export this out to Excel. This is another useful report. Uh, now, if you're wanting to see more see individual uh, transactions for a payee, that's where you might go to the general ledger and then filter it out by a payee and say, like, well, I want to just see everything for Arling Dowling. Here's all the line items for her if you want to see the individual line items instead. Okay. Now, another thing you might want to do is you might want to see a ledger with a running balance for a specific account. Now, you can definitely do that too. And that's going to be done through the home screen here. So let's go ahead and let's say we want to take a closer look at one of our expense accounts. So I'm going to click on where it says expenses here. And this is going to let me drill down into my uh, expense category. Now I see all the categories I have in expenses here, and I can kind of scroll through those. So let's go ahead and go into our uh, church expenses here. And from church expenses, let's say we're going to go into automotive, and then we're going to go into vehicle insurance. And this, so we ha now we have a ledger here for just our vehicle insurance expense account. Now with this, you'll see it shows you every transaction over the time period that you have selected, the type of transaction, you know, the type of transaction was, and if it was a check, you'll see that here in the check number. Uh, of course, the payee, the account, uh, which you should know the account there, uh, any memos that were involved with this, the amount of these, each transaction, and then you get a running balance on this account. So you can kind of see the running balance in this account. So this is great if you're wanting to kind of get a little more specifics about a specific account. And of course, then you can print this out or export it out to Excel. Okay, so let's go ahead now and let's talk about the bank account reconciliation process. Now, the bank account reconciliation process in Church 360 Ledger is a pretty easy to set up process. 
What I'm going to suggest with this is that when we're wanting to do our bank account reconciliation process, uh, we're going to, of course, want our bank statement for the month that we're reconciling. And I do recommend that you just try to reconcile one month at a time. I've definitely worked with some churches in the past who have maybe tried to do multiple months or once or even years at once. And I can tell you from experience that doesn't typically work out too well. So I'm going to advise maybe just try to do a month at a time. You know, you have multiple months to get through. In the long run, I think it's going to be the option that is uh, kind of the most efficient use of your time. Now, as for actually setting up the bank account reconciliation, we're going to have our bank statement. I recommend we have a pencil on hand too, um, and I'll explain that part in just a minute. But we're going to have the uh, bank statement, a pencil, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our bank statement, and we are going to go ahead and figure out um, what date range we need to set for this. Now, in this example today, I'm going to be using the month of uh, you know, the month of May of 2022. Okay. Um, now, you might be tempted to say, oh, we're reconciling May. Let's just go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and just reconcile the month of May. Well, we're going to go ahead and just pull up May. Well, we, we don't necessarily want to do that. But so, the, you know, looking at our bank statement very frequently, especially with checks, you're going to run into um, times when people, you've wrote them a check, they don't get it cashed right away. Checks are probably the most common cause of this. It's not to say any other transactions could be a cause of this, but checks are kind of the most frequent offenders of this. But with checks, especially, you know, you might write a check. Let's say you write a check towards the end of the month. You write it, you know, maybe on the 27th of the month, 28th, or, you know, towards the end of the month. Well, a person might not be able to make it to the bank to get that cash, that check cashed before the end of the month. And in that case, you might have a check from April, for example, on your May reconciliation. You know, you wrote it in April, but it didn't clear the bank till May. The bank statement is only going to show you what's cleared the bank. So in this example, what I suggest doing is looking for the lowest check number on your bank statement. So if I go back through here and I look at my checks, okay, well, what? You know, what's our lowest check number? Well, huh, I have this check seven. Looking at my bank statement, I have this check 7514. And looking at all my other checks, there, you know, 7517, 7518, 7519, 7514 seems like it's the lowest check number. And you can see that's in the month of April. So even though I'm reconciling the month of May, I'm going to go ahead and set my date range up here from April 27th, 2022. And then I'm going to set the end of my date range to the end of whatever month that I'm reconciling. So I'm going to set this for 05-31-2022. Now, what, the, what this is going to do for me here is this is going to filter my uh, transactions. So I'm only seeing transactions that might be a part of my bank uh, account reconciliation. Um, by doing this, this is going to kind of help focus us in for a reconciliation and make sure that we're seeing only the transactions that we actually might need to clear. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we're gonna do inside of Church 360 Ledger is we're gonna drill down through our asset accounts until we get to the bank account that we're reconciling. So I'm gonna click here into assets and I'm gonna go through my various categories until I get to my checking account that I'm reconciling, which in this case is central trust checking. So this is my central trust checking account. And you'll notice, notice now here up at the top, we have a button here that says reconcile. So I'm gonna click this reconcile button here. And this is gonna take me into the bank account reconciliation view for this account. Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna set my statement date. The statement, uh, first off here, we'll need to set up a few, few things from the statement. So the statement date is gonna be represent the last, the date of the last transaction on my bank statement. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to say the last one cleared the bank on 531 of 2022. Okay, so that's the last transaction on my bank statement on the date it cleared. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in the starting balance and ending balance that according to my bank statement. Now, these are all fictional numbers here, of course. But so I have my balances set up here. So we're going to say we started the month with $20,000 in the bank in this checking account. And we ended the month at $22,000 uh, 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 $22, and $4.50. Uh, 
and three cents. That's what we ended the month on, okay? So by putting these figures in, I come up with my statement difference. My statement difference is the difference between my starting balance and my ending balance. Okay, so uh, if and I'm seeing you might this might be a positive figure, it might be a negative figure. It just depends if your bank account basically gained or lost value through the end of the month. Then I also see a selected difference here. Now the selected difference is the sum of all the transactions that I've marked as being cleared in this reconciliation. The off buy is the difference between my statement difference and my selected difference. So the idea is here, we want our selected difference to match up with our statement difference, which means this off buy is gonna get zero, okay? Now, this is a pretty short reconciliation, but you know, you are probably, you know, when you're doing your reconciliation, you might have something a little bit longer. So we have this filter option to help you find particular transactions on your reconciliation. You can search by amount, memos or payees. So, you know, let's say I need to see everything for Derek Woods. Well, if I start typing in Derek, it finds him. I could also say, well, I want just the electric bill. Well, there's that. Or I can even search by a particular amount. So, I type in 5.40. Oh, hey, look, there's my journal entry to show my bank interest. So, that's how you can kind of search through this. Now, as for actually running your reconciliation and kind of getting through this, I would go ahead and then and take my bank statement and with my bank statement and my pencil, I'm gonna go through it here and I'm just gonna look at my bank statement and say, okay, I have check 7514. Well, do I have that on my bank statement? Yes, I do. And if I look at that, that was written to Laclede Gas Company and the amount it was for was $98.67. Well, if that all agrees here between my bank statement and Church 360 Ledger, I'll go ahead and check this transaction off. You can see now that affected my selected difference. So now my selected difference is $98.67, okay? So I'm just gonna keep repeating that process. Now I'm gonna see if I can find on my bank statement a payment to CenturyLink Telephone for $75. If I can, I'll check that off. And again, that goes into my, uh, that goes into my selected difference. So I'm just gonna keep repeating that process and checking off each item that appears on my bank statement. And if it agrees inside of Church 360 Ledger, I'm gonna check it off. Okay, so I would go through and check it off and you may not check off every single transaction that you have in your bank and your bank reconciliation. It's very possible that you won't because you might have some transactions, especially towards the end of the month that haven't cleared yet. So you would leave those alone like this check here on that we wrote on 531.22, check 7519. Well, that was written on the last day of the month. There's a probably a pretty good chance that yeah, we wrote it on that day but maybe farmer's insurance just didn't get it in the mail yet. So, uh, you know, it might not appear on your bank statement for that month and that's okay. It's all right to leave uh, some of these transactions unchecked if they didn't clear. And that, and that's, and that's, you know, you want to do that for those transactions. You don't want to mark something off that hasn't actually cleared. Now, if you move your mouse over the selected difference, another thing that might help you is it's going to give you a total of each transaction type here as well. So you can see I cleared off $1,646.02 of checks. I cleared off $8,865 of deposits. And you can kind of see how all those, all those items kind of hash out there. Okay, so you can see all those different things. So as you go through here and you've checked off your transactions, now in my case, I got everything to come out. But it's very likely that you'll run, you know, when you're doing your reconciliation, you might run into some problems. Well, what can you do if you're under problems? There, there's a few things to consider what might first off be the cause of the problem. So maybe you would have, uh, maybe you uh, have something on your bank statement that didn't appear here inside of your uh, ledger. Well, in that case, we need to figure out, was that maybe outside of the date range that we set? Or was it something that we just haven't entered yet? Well, we need to handle that either way. We'd also maybe wanna make sure that we didn't check something off that wasn't supposed to be cleared yet, or we want to make sure that everything we entered has been entered in the correct amount. Now, regardless of what changes you need to make, you can make those changes by coming up here to this orange uh, this orange button here with the dollar sign. And this is going to take us back to our home screen. And then I can make any changes that I need to make. I can go edit transactions. So I can click on this, I can click on a transaction to make a change to it. Um, I can add new transactions in. I can do whatever I need to do to make sure that I have everything that I need for my reconciliation. I can change the date range if I need to. 
once I've made all the changes that I need to make, I can go back down through my accounts, click on reconcile again, and then this is gonna go through here and, and it's gonna pick up right where you left off. So uh, the only difference is you'll see, of course, any changes that you made to transactions or any new transactions that fall within the date range that you set. Now, once you've gone through and you've gotten everything to, to balance out, and you can only do this once you've gotten things to balance out, you can click the save button here. That's gonna go ahead and post your bank account reconciliation. Now, if you decide, hey, I really just need to start over and get kind of a clean slate on this, you can click cancel. That's gonna wipe out all the work we've done on this reconciliation. So it's gonna wipe out what's here in the statement box. It's gonna un uncheck all these boxes. So you can kind of just start over here. So if I click cancel and then come back to reconcile here, you can see everything's gone. So let me go ahead real quick. I wanna, I wanna post this reconciliation real quick. Let me just put my figures back in. Clear those all off. And then if I click save, that posts my reconciliation. And when a reconciliation is posted, every line item that you went ahead and cleared here is going to have this little lock icon next to it. When a transaction is reconciled, it is locked into the system. We've kind of put our stamp on it and said, hey, this transaction is correct. We verified it with the bank it's in here and what that means is you can no longer make any changes to this transaction you can't edit it you can't void it you can only copy it uh you can only copy the transaction um and if you want to undo a transaction that's been reconciled probably the best way to do that is to make a journal entry for the same day as the transaction that just looks at the debits and credits and flips those the other way around that'll kind of undo that transaction it won't unreconcile it but it will kind of cancel it out now, you might be wondering, well, how do I get a reconciliation report? Well, that's gonna be leading to our next part of our training today, which is our event log, okay? So this is our event log here. Let's go ahead and set our date range on this so we can look at all of 2022. And this is gonna show us here all the different things that have happened here inside of Church 360 Ledger. So you'll see it gives you a timestamp with a date and time that an action happened on. It'll show you the action that was taken and you can filter this by action. So you can say if something was created, destroyed, finalized, printed, updated, you can filter by those. You can also say what type of uh, thing you know, was affected here. So was this a something about an account, about a budget, a payee, a reconciliation or a transaction, you can kind of filter by that. And then you can also filter by user and you can check or uncheck which user you're looking for. So you'll see all, all your users. And CTS is basically, if we've logged in and done something for you, it'll show up under CTS. Now, finally, the message here, the message is a kind of a, a description of what happened. And typically you'll have links you can click on to jump to see what it's talking about. Now, as for the message here, for the reconciliation report, you'll notice on anytime you do a reconciliation, you'll see a message that says reconciled and it'll tell you however many line items for whatever bank account that you reconciled. So if I were to click on this, this actually takes me into my reconciliation report and it'll give me the statement date, starting balance, ending balance, and it'll show me all the transactions that I reconciled here. And then I can click print here to go ahead and print this out or export to Excel to export this out. Now, another common question that we sometimes get is, well, what about the transactions that I didn't clear? Can I get a report of those? Yes, you can. You'll need to kind of set it up though. So what you'll wanna do, is let's go back and set our date range again. So 04, 27, 2022, and then we're gonna run that through the end of May, 2022, so there it is. And so now we have all our transactions, and then I can export this out to Excel. And from here then, I can enable my editing, and I can go ahead and sort the, and actually, I could go ahead and sort this by this reconciled column here. Now, granted, there's only one transaction I didn't reconcile, uh, but I could go through and sort this by my reconciled column. This would then show me all my reconciled transactions. I could just go through and delete these. And whatever I'm left over with is a listing of all the transactions that I didn't reconcile 
during this reconciliation. So that would be a kind of a way you could uh, keep track of that. And that's our bank reconciliation process and our event log. Okay, so that's going to wrap up uh, this por uh, the portion of that uh, kind of our demonstration today. Let's go ahead and get into our quiz here. Okay, so our quiz got a couple questions for you guys. Again, no pressure on you guys for this, but we're going to go ahead and get into our questions. So let's go ahead and continue in here. First question up. The general ledger report shows both active and voided, uh, voided transactions. Is that true or false? So you're going to see a window pop up on screen here. Just go ahead and answer if that is true or false. The general ledger report shows both active and voided transactions. So give everybody just another moment or two to get your answers in. Okay. I'll go ahead and close our poll question out here. And it looks like we were unanimous in this one. Everybody said this one was true. So let's go ahead and continue on. And yes, that is true. The general ledger report will show you both active and voided transactions. If you don't want to see your voided transactions in your report, you can export to Excel and remove the voided transactions from there. That's kind of where we did that sorting and uh, deleting those rows that we didn't need. All right, next up. True or false, when running your income and expense report, you can set the date down to an exact month, day, and year. When running your income and expense report, you can set the date down to an exact month, day, and year. Is that true or false? So thinking back to the income and expense report, can we set the month, day, and year on that, or was it something different? Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Now, it looks like we are a little split on that one. So let's see you know, what was what was correct here. And the answer on that is false. So the income and expense report uses budget information. And since budgets can't be divided within the month, you, you can select down to a month and year you're looking for, but not the exact day. So remember, because this is using budgets, it can only go down to a month. You can't go down to an exact day. So that's, that's why you have just the month and year selection there. All right. Next up, we have the chart of accounts report. The chart of accounts report can be used as a trial balance report. Is that true or false? Chart of accounts report can be used as a trial balance report. I mentioned this one briefly here. So kind of think back on that and the chart of accounts report. Can that be used as a trial balance report? Give everybody another, another moment or two to answer. Okay, everybody has answered. Let's go ahead and close that one out. Everybody said true and everybody is correct. This report shows the total credits and debits for each account. For specific sums or totals, the reports can be exported to Excel and modified. So you could go through here and you could sum up those uh, debit and credit columns. And when you see that those are in balance, that's going to show you that, that kind of proper trial balance report. Okay, next up is a multiple choice question. This is talking about the bank account reconciliation working with the bank account reconciliation and you find out that you need to enter a transaction, what should you do? Should you either A, click the save button, B, click the cancel button, or C, click the orange dollar sign button? Okay, so A, B, or C, save, cancel, or orange dollar sign button. This is the correct way to get back to be able to enter in more transactions if you need to for your uh, bank account reconciliation. Give everybody just a moment or two to kind of think about this question. Give everyone just a few more seconds at either A, B, or C here. Either you're going to click the save button, the cancel button, or the orange dollar sign button. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this question out here. Let's go ahead and close it. All right, so I had a little bit of a split opinion on this one. People say B and some people say C. So what's the correct answer here? The correct answer is C. You want to click on that home button here, the orange dollar sign. This is going to take you out of the reconciliation. It will, it will not delete your work. Once the, transaction's been, uh, once the transaction's been entered, just go ahead and reopen the reconciliation and continue clearing transactions. You only want to click cancel if you want to start over. Uh, the save button is used when you're actually ready to post your reconciliation. You can only do that when your off bias gets down to zero. So uh, you only want to click the cancel if you just want to kind of start over with a clean slate. Okay, the home button is going to be the way to go. 
All right, now finally, to print out a reconciliation report, we wanna go to the event log. Is that true or false? So we just went over that one. To print out a reconciliation report, we're gonna go to the event log. So let's give everybody just another few moments to get that one answered. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out. Everybody said true and everybody's correct. A bank account reconciliation report can only be printed from the event log. So you need to post your bank reconciliation first, then you can go to the event log, click on the description there, and it's gonna go ahead and give you that bank account reconciliation report. And then if you wanted the uh, uncleared transactions, you'll go back to that ledger for that account and you can export that out and get that from there. Okay, well, do you guys have any questions? I didn't see any questions come across during today's training, but that doesn't mean that you guys don't have any questions. So if you guys have any questions about anything we covered here today, feel please feel free to go ahead and ask those questions here now. I'm gonna go ahead and just move to the next slide. Don't feel like you're, if you're writing a question, don't feel like you're running out of time or anything like that. I'm, happy to answer any questions that you have. But I do want to thank everybody for attending today's Church 360 Ledger webinar. I really hope everyone enjoyed today's session, that you learned something new. Um, if you have any further questions, though, uh, you know, after the session, if you think of them afterwards, go ahead and give us a call at 1-800-346-6120. Again, that number is 1-800-346-6120. Or you can email us at support at cts.cph.org. Um, so if you don't have any questions, that's going to wrap up today's training. Uh, and again, thank you so much for showing up. And uh, if you are writing questions, like I said, I'll hang around here for just another minute or two and uh, be happy to answer those for you. So go ahead and if you're typing those out, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, that is the training for today. Okay, doesn't look like there's any other questions. So I wanna again, thank everybody for showing up today and you guys all have a great day.